gentleman would like to go next. Madison Worthington, and used to live on Lawyer's Hill, about a, seems like a century ago. Uh, before I start, I just want to urge people here, don't just wait for somebody to come and interview you, but start writing down something about your childhood, early life, and people are going to love to see it. I, I have such accounts that came, I inherited from my family which I greatly enjoy. I wish I had many more. I wish I'd listened to my parents when they told stories. I have a lot of stories from my parents, which I won't tell you here tonight because they're not my stories. But I do, do want to tell you one story that I think might be interesting about a horse. The horse's name was Lindsay Hillis. I don't know whether they, those names mean anything to you all here. There may be someone here that remembers that. But uh, this was a few years before World War II. Uh, there was a family named uh, Lin uh, Waters on Lawyer's Hill. And uh, the last, last member of that family was Lindsay Waters, an old lady, a very uh, delightful old lady, sort of uh, out to lunch, but very nice. And she had uh, someone named Mrs. Hillis, whose first name I don't know, to take care of her. And they lived on a house which is now long gone, sort of near, near the Gables, if anybody, if you know that, now it's a community practically. But um, they had this old gray mare, literally. And she was a worthless horse by that time. She was so old and so weak and so tired and so sleepy, you had to sort of keep punching her to make her wake up. But uh, she uh, was obviously no use to Lindsay Waters or Mrs. Hillis, so they gave her to my aunt and uncle, Mary and Teddy Morris, who some of you know, I'm sure, or knew, uh, because they liked animals and they thought they'd, they had a pasture and they'd take her out to pasture. So she made the transfer to them uh, just before the war started. Now I lived right near there and I would go visit my Uncle Teddy and he had a battery powered radio. He was the only one around at that time to, to have a radio that I can remember. But uh, one Sunday I went there to see him and he was all excited and he let me listen to the radio. The Japanese had bombed Pearl Harbor and the war had started. Well Uncle Teddy was a very civic minded man and he figured what he needed to do was to uh, notify people that the war had started because other people didn't have radios. Uh, the question was how to get to people, particularly to uh, an army officer that lived quite some distance at the other end of Lawyer's Hill. So he got Lindsay Hillis, saddled her up and thinking himself to be Paul Revere, I guess, <laughs> got on Lindsay Hillis and, and somehow prodded her into motion and went riding down Lawyer's Hill. The, the Japanese are coming, the Japanese are coming. <laughs> and the first person he notified was uh, Colonel Meyer, who, uh, <coughs> excuse me, then became my father-in-law later, many later years, my wife's father. And uh, you've got, you know, it's time to report to Washington, the Japanese are coming, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, Lindsay Hillis somehow survived the ride. I think Uncle Teddy went back home down Lawyer's Hill and, and stopped at every house and told them about the, that the war was coming and that the war had started. Um, now, during the war, uh, of course, we had gas rationing, tire rationing, oil wasn't very available, uh, so cars weren't much good to us. The speed limit was 35 miles an hour, so really we didn't, a uh, horse was just as good. So people started putting their cars in the barn. I remember our car, which was a 37 Ford, went in, a, went in, our, went in our barn, uh, put it up on blocks. We sold the tires, siphoned out the gas, and sold it, and uh, uh, sort of covered it up uh, for the duration. But as a replacement, people started getting their horses and buggies out. And there was quite a bit of uh, carriage traffic up and down Lawyer's Hill Road. And uh, 
About this time, uh, a friend of ours had a wagon of some sort in their barn, brought it out, but they didn't have a horse. So they made a deal with my Uncle Teddy. They got Lindsay Hillis and hitched her up to this wagon. And Lindsay Hillis didn't like the idea very much. But uh, they used to use her for shopping. And I can remember my mother and Mrs. Lanier, who owned the, ho owned the wagon, uh, they would go down to, uh, we knew it as, as uh, Sewell's store. It was later Snodgrass's store, then became, and it's an IGA. I think it's still in existence, if I'm not mistaken. A Pizza Hut now. Well, that kind of kind of missed uh, Snodgrass's store. It was for a while called uh, the Pink Store because it was painted painted pink. But in any case, I can remember my mother and and uh, Mrs. Uh, Lanier taking Lindsay Hillis down to the store, which was only about half a mile away, uh, and getting the groceries for several different. Uh, families in the neighborhood. But they had neglected to figure out the belly band on the horse. And if you know what a belly band does, it, uh, in, with, with a horse pulling a wagon, it, it keeps the uh, shafts of the wagon from going up like this, uh, going up around the course of horse's ears. So, uh, of course, with the loaded wagon, the, the shafts immediately came up and they couldn't get across US-1. <laughs> so they, they uh, but my mother on one side and Mrs. Lanier on the other side were hanging on to the shafts, <laughs> holding them down and running along. And Lindsay Hillis was just about asleep most of the time. This <laughs> it was quite a sight to see. <laughs> now, another thing that happened during the uh, or, of course, everybody had victory gardens, particularly the children. And I'm sure most of you know the Elk Ridge Assembly Room, or the hall, as it was called, uh, had quite an organization. The organization was uh, Mrs. Marion Davis. And Mrs. Davis would organize the children in the area. And among other things, she got them to uh, raise vegetables. And uh, we really worked at it. I, I raised radishes and had great success with radishes, except nobody wanted any. <laughs> so finally, I persuaded Mrs. Uh, Davis, to, at least since she started the whole thing, to buy my radishes. Well, I had to walk about half a mile to her house to bring the radishes to her. And I told her they were 10 cents a bunch, and it was a big bunch. And she said, I'll give you a penny for them. <laughs> So we, we negotiated. I think I got a nickel in the end. But Mrs. Davis also ran an organization she called called Help the Hall Happily. And it was designed to help the defense effort. And we had to go and collect aluminum pots and pans that supposedly they were going to turn into airplanes. Uh, we also collected other stuff, cloth and so on. And Mrs. Davis stockpiled them and then who knows where they went from there. I don't think, I don't think they ever became airplanes or, or clothing for the soldiers. But a lot of other things went on at the hall, and I'm not going to uh, go into a lot of them. It, it would take too long. I know some of you still go to the hall as members and uh, live right next to it. I was talking to someone here who lives right next to it, and it's still a going concern. And uh, among other things, just to get the full circle in my story. Among other things, one of the features of the 4th of July celebration at the hall, which I think is still going, isn't it? Anyone? Yes, still going. Uh, was uh, hay, hay ride, uh, rides in a wagon pulled by Lindsay Hillis. And so <laughs> so Lin Lindsay Hillis pulled this wagon up and down Lawyers Hill Road with the, the smaller kids in it, most of the those who were bigger steered clear of that entirely. And I think I've probably used up my time. Uh, thank you. Thank you.